Gracias, amigo. Let's get into this. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 and 7 in the New Living says this. As for me and my life has already been poured out as an offering to God. The time of my death is near. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my race. I have remained faithful. Now I'm saying that to kind of plug in the news that we heard over the weekend, which is that of none other than the U's, the horseshoe, it's quarterback Andrew Luck retired. And I thought of this scripture when I thought about him is he did fight a good fight. Mm-hmm. You know, through all the injuries, through all of the uh, naysayers, he did what he thought he could do to come back. But his body gave out on him. And listening to his press conference over the weekend, he pretty much was like, he said, man, listen, for four years, for four years I have been trying to get back on this field. Yeah, been on this merry-go-round. Yes, yeah. and it's been injury after injury after injury. Up, down, round, and round. Yeah, and he pretty much said, mentally, I can't do it no more. Yeah. He was, yeah. it, the injuries broke him mentally. And a quarterback or athlete, period, that breaks mentally – it's worse than if he breaks physically. Yeah. And so he was at a place where he's like, listen, I got nothing else to give the game. It's not that I don't still love it, but he realized, and he, these were his words that I loved. And he said, it's not fair for me to keep the Colts in limbo when they can keep moving on without me. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. I get it. And I'm like, what a great call, you know, because, okay, let's say in two years your, your body can come back. You can always come back to the league. Yeah, he's only 29 years old. He's right. very young. Right. But for right now, I got the body of a 90-year-old. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And until I do something else to make this different, uh, I won't be on this field. And I'm not taking no hits. Mm-hmm. I can't take no hits at this. Now, how important do you think, because he also left a bunch of money on the table. Mm-hmm. How important do you think you know, if you were in Andrew Luck's position, is your career over your body? You know, because that's a decision he had to make. What's more important, my career or my body, my life after the sport? And sometimes you're in a position to make that decision. There are a lot of people. I mean, historically, Jim Brown, everybody say he got out. And oh, we're going to talk about a, that. A lot left in the tank. Uh, Barry Sanders is notorious. Mm-hmm. I personally felt like De- Barry Sanders was mm-hmm. at his peak right. when mm-hmm. he got out and mm-hmm. he left. You know, and yeah. there are other people who left uh, kind of at the top of their game or when they were uh, pretty much uh, an all star. Um, Andrew Luck, uh, I give him credit because he really tried to defy it, but it got to the, pos- to the point where his body was saying, you know what, Andrew? Sit down. You got to sit down. Mm-hmm. And, and lucky for him, and, and, and let me, first let me give him credit, because what he did and what he's doing takes a lot of guts. It takes being brave, yeah. right. because there's going to be ridicule. You know, there's going to be naysayers, second mm-hmm. guess. You know, they booed him when he was leaving the field. Exactly. How, how dare they boo him? Right. That's, that, that's wrong to boo that man with everything he done did for that organization, for that mm-hmm. city. He was, he was a, a upstanding a contributor in the community. Uh, mm-hmm. Andrew Luck is the type of guy that you want to be the face of your franchise. He came in, heralded as the savior for the coach uh, after Peyton Manning, and lo and behold, he he actually overachieved in my book. Right. right. You know, he overachieved. So uh, with less. With, with with much less. So um, I give him credit for trying. He set out a whole year, came back, took him to the playoffs. And now uh, he's hurt again, and he just don't want to. He want to get off the merry-go-round. So I give him a lot of credit. And the amount of money that these people make, these pro athletes make nowadays, it's easier to make the decision that I ain't gonna play no more because <laughs> they signing bonuses be ridiculous. Yeah, you still have so it's not it. a financial issue for him. And a lot of them, when they're superstars, they get paid a lot of money. But mm-hmm. at this point, I think um, his body is giving him the cue, and his mind is saying, "Look." I can't do this anymore mentally. Yeah, I would have to agree with everything that you know you just said, Will, with regards to he made the right decision. And to your point, you know, Pastor Skip, relative to do you choose career over body, I think that the flip side of this, there are some other worst-case scenarios that have happened. You know, there's a laundry list of individuals from folks like Earl Campbell who 
has to pretty much operate in a wheelchair right. to other folks such as Jim Jerome McMahon. Bettis, Jim, Jim McMahon, McMahon, others that stuck around mm -hmm. too long. And right. so and, and some that didn't didn't make it uh that they actually wound up uh Junior Seau situation. Right. Exactly, you know, exactly. So, With the so whole concussion I, you know, piece. So it's a lot, yeah. it's a lot of uh, examples out there. And I think having those examples, and even like the new technology that we have that can you know do the brain examination and all that kind of stuff, you get a chance to make really a, a quality decision. And with Andrew, I think in his, his case, not only you know did he make the right move, as you mentioned, Will, he's only 29 years old, he's young. He also went to what, Stanford? So he's a pretty right. bright guy who can probably <laughs> right. make some money off the field, if not going in the booth somewhere, because he's pretty articulate, knows the game, and as a quarterback, probably can do some good color commentary, talking about reading defenses and all that kind of stuff. So his future is still bright. But, It'll just but, come in a different kind this. of a way. He has a face made for radio, though. He, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pass on that one. Moving right along. <laughs> one hey. other item that I'll, I'll hey. add. Okay. Let, let me, just, go ahead, go let me say this part, too. His father uh, played professional football. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like he came from humble beginnings like a lot of the athletes do. Right. You know, he came from a family of professional athletes. So I don't think financially, uh, an issue. finances weighed a lot on his decision. Yeah, 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 I don't think so either. One one, one guy uh, a couple years ago, his name was Rashan Salam. He played running back for right. the Bears, went to Colorado, won a Heisman Trophy right. in, in, in the 90s. And one of the things that he said in an article that I'll never forget, he talked about how the injuries that he was battling since he had become a professional athlete, and they were asking him in this magazine, you know, article, you know, how, how is it? He was like, well, most people think that, you know, football is a rough sport but they don't understand it's brutal. Right. So these guys are like gladiators yes. from right. back in the Roman times where they would feed you to the lions. And right. this collision piece, and I remember Richard Sherman from the Seahawks, now the 49ers, said that the pace of the game is so fast, it's like brr, pow. That's how right. fast it goes. So you're right. in a car accident on every play. Right. And so when it comes down to do I want to have some longevity, mobility, and range of motion with my body, or do I want to continue to get into these, you know, car crashes and my body is already telling me, hey, bro, sit down. I think it's a, a no brainer to just go ahead and listen to your body. And remember, this is just this is just a game. This right. isn't your life. Right. This is a game. A right. very, very well-paying one, but we already talked about money is not necessarily an issue. No. So now we're talking about quality of life and longevity. So I think he made the right decision. It was a, right. a brave decision, you know, to make. Some folks might not understand. Some selfish people, you know, fans included, that, man, I want to see him play one more season. Hey, bro, when a person has an injury, it's a for real injury. A right. broken arm, a broken leg, a cracked rib. That's, just, imagine yourself, you break a leg, you got the boot on, how are you going to take a shower? How right. you? This is, this is real stuff. We just right. say, well, he's going to be out on the injury reserve for six weeks. He'll be back after six weeks. Hey, man, that's six weeks of recovery from broken bones. Yes. And so right. I think he made the right decision, and I think he might even serve as an example to others that might say, you know what? If I'm going to weigh this thing out, I might have to pull an Andrew Luck if I have recurring right. injuries that tend to be difficult seemingly to come back from. Yeah, you know, I often think about some great players that retired early. You mentioned Jim Brown. Barry Sanders retired because he looked and said, my body ain't gonna take the beating because y'all ain't gonna get me a line. Right. You know, he was like, I see the, I see the writing on the wall. Exactly. Y'all think y'all gonna beat me up. still don't have a line. Right. <laughs> but, then you, but then Megatron, uh, Calvin Johnson did yes. the same thing. Exactly. He's like, again, in Detroit. Yeah. He's like, listen, y'all not gonna throw 700 passes and I get beat up mm -hmm. and, and that's it. But I also think of an injury that ended someone's career, Bo Jackson. Mm -hmm. his, he, his, his retirement was a shock because you remember Bo knows everything. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, but when he got injured and, and that hip happened for him, his game was, he was done. Yeah, in yeah. two sports. Right, right. But I, but I thought about you know, some major retirements that kind of affected us. We talked about those, but then magic was a shocker for me. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, when he, when he came out with, with his announcement of, you know. HIV positive. Man. Yeah, part yeah. of me almost wanted to cry, man. I'm like, no, not magic. Mm -hmm. Not magic. Yeah. He was a shocker. Jordan was a shocker. Yes. Mm -hmm. His first retirement. Yes. After the passing of his father. His father, mm -hmm. right. He was a shocker. 
Ken Griffey Jr. was a shocker. Yeah, yeah. I think Ken Griffey was similar to Andrew Luck. He had suffered a number of injuries. He played 100% right. crashing into the wall, diving right. for balls, and arguably, arguably best major league player ever. ever of, right. Because he hit close to 600 our home time. runs. Yeah, yeah. Our time. yeah. And, 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 and had a lot of injury curtailed seasons. And despite that, had some Hall of Fame productivity mm -hmm. and couldn't even be on the field the whole time. Yeah. Now, now I'm, I'm going to say something that's going to be very controversial. But I think about Chris uh, Ken Griffey Jr.'s retirement mm -hmm. and what he went through. And then I think about Barry Bonds saying, you know what? I'm going to take something for my body so my body can recover faster, mm -hmm. so I can recover and be able to still play. Because Barry Bonds and, Chris and Ken Griffey Jr. are the best baseball players of our time. Right. You know, most people, a lot of people would say Willie Mays is the best ever. A mm -hmm. lot of people would say that. But it's not our time. But, but, but we didn't see Willie Mays. We, right. But, right. But we saw Ken Griffey Jr. We saw Barry Bonds. Uh -huh. And Barry Bonds was an all-star before he left Pittsburgh. Exactly. Right. He was and an all-star. But he was experiencing some of those same things, mm -hmm. and he had something that he could do to prolong his career. Mm -hmm. And he did that. Okay. Uh, allegedly. <laughs> right. he did that. Nice disclaimer. And and, right. and and those are decisions that you have to make. A Rod had to make that decision mm -hmm. on right. his body. Yeah. Right. You yeah. know, so so they have different options now. I, I, it may have been an opportunity for for um for the the quarterback to to make the decision. Andrew Luck. And Andrew um Luck. Yeah. yeah, and and then Andrew Luck said, you know what? I'm not gonna do those things. Mm -mm. Right. Mm -mm. I'm just – Barry Sanders probably could have did the same thing. And he said, you know what? I'm not going to do those things. I'm just going to hang it up. Yeah. Right. But, 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 but those things have become options to people mm -hmm. to prolong their career and to make the amount of money that you're going to make playing this game during these times. So uh, I know that's controversial to say. Right. Mm -hmm. But regardless to if Barry Bonds never make the Hall of Fame, and he should, he still get to keep the money. Right. <laughs> very, very, very good right. point. And so does, and so does the, the Major League Baseball for all of the tickets that they sold oh, yeah. off of him. Yeah. Right. And, Ain't nobody giving them that bag back. Money. Correct. So, so some of this is financially induced. Uh, here's the thing. I would agree. The owners ain't going to say keep him out. No. It ain't gonna be, it's sports writers that's going to say, yeah, he don't deserve it. You mm -hmm. jokers ain't never played a stitch of nothing. And you want to tell me whether or not I'm a Hall of Famer. <laughs> You know, because you done watched enough baseball, <laughs> you an expert yeah. on it. You, you know, what? watched enough baseball. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. The 10,000 hours of watching. Right. Um, I'm an expert. One, one, one other point I wanted, player. I wanted to make about just the challenges associated with professional sports. There have been a number of athletes, particularly football players, that would talk about, you know, injuring, particularly the lower extremities, the legs, and you going in at halftime and getting some sort of cortisone shot, yes. right. like right in the knee. Yes. And right. those of us that have went to the dentist and got shots in the mouth, those that didn't got shots at the doctor, needles aren't anything anybody that I've ever heard is a fan of. I've right. never heard anybody say, I love getting shots. I just really love getting shots. No. Unless <laughs> you're on drugs. <laughs> but even those jokers, that, they, they do it for the hind. If there was any right. other way they could probably do it besides injection, they probably would. You're probably you know what right. I'm saying? But the, 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 the point that I'm trying to make is, is that there are a lot of painful sacrifices exactly. that one makes. So get this cortisone shot so you'll be good enough to play the second half of this game. You might not be able to walk the whole rest of the week, right. and you might have done some lifelong damage. But if you can help us, you know, get this win, it'll be all right. I mean, so right. at some point in time, the individual has to draw the line of, yeah. hey, man, I'm not doing that. Hey, Brett Favre was uh, on painkillers. Yeah. He sure was. He was on painkillers because he, he, kept, he kept getting hurt. And, mm -hmm. and he was known for being the Iron Man. Mm -hmm. He came out the huddle regardless. Yeah. And, but he was on pain pills, and he wound up getting hooked on them. Right. So it's a lot. We look at it, and we're entertained. Mm -hmm. And we're entertained. Yeah. But I think uh, football speaks to the ego of the American male. Mm. The American man. It speaks to the toughness, the machismo, and the bravado, yeah. and the, 
all of that stuff of the man, and that's why we love it, because just what you said, Pastor Tim, mm -hmm. it goes into that gladiator thing yeah. without the lions. Uh -huh. you, right. you, you, how brave, how bold are you, how much courage do you have? Uh -huh. and, it, and it speaks to that, to the male ego, and I think football personifies that as an entertainment um, uh, avenue, and that's one of the reasons why it's so popular. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's two things that makes yeah. football popular. One is the hits. Mm -hmm. You love to see a good hit. Yeah. The other thing is the getting away from those good hits. Yes. Right. Those are the two things. Yes. The getting hit and the escape. The escape. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. That, that, that's what makes you go, ooh, did you see that move? Right. Or ooh, did you see that hit? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. But that's what makes people go, man. And I was reading an article that said playing football is like you running 20 miles an hour and somebody running 20 miles an hour at you at yeah. Every hit. Yeah. Every hit. That's 40 miles an hour hit you getting. That's a car accident. Right. From your body. And you got to be a tough, tough man. You know, to and. Endure that. Yeah. And for me, you know, the only man I know that's that kind of tough is Jesus mm -hmm. and all he went through to get to the cross. But right. I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't see. I walk with a limp right now because of football. Mm. Yeah. You know, because I played football. But. You know, I was also and, and, thinking, and how long ago was that football injury? Was it more than 30, 25 years ago? 30 years. So 30, 30 years plus ago. Years. So you didn't have 30 years of residual impact of something that happened in football. And I didn't have a guaranteed contract. And didn't have a contract. Exactly. So, you know, but what I also look at is with these, these players is they're looking at their lives and going, looking at these vets. And first of all, the, the, the pension is terrible. Mm -hmm. The pension is terrible for the NFL, which is the most brutal sport out yeah. of all of them. Correct. They get paid the least, and they got the worst pension. And, and no guaranteed and contract. No guaranteed contract. <laughs> no guaranteed yeah. contract. Yeah. Right. And so they're looking at this going, they're looking at the Earl Campbells, who's in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. They're looking at the Junior Seals, who's killing them. And they're going, man, I don't know if I want to keep doing all this. Correct. Because even Pat Tillman thought it'd be better to go to Afghanistan to be in the Mm -hmm. To be play NFL, mm -hmm. he rather he, Pat Tillman rest his God rest in peace. You know, he died in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. Went to war, but even with friendly fire, you know. But and then you got people like I think about Ricky Williams. Mm -hmm. He's like I'm retiring because I use and I'm thinking he used the weed just to keep his mind right and maybe even to cool it, you know chill his body out to numb himself up yeah. some. Yeah medicinal purposes. Right. But, you know, he retired because, like, look, I'm going to fail drug tests because I'm going to get high. Yeah. You know, I, I'm going to get high. But then after a few after 10 years, he tried to come back. Yeah. But, you know, he couldn't do it. He just couldn't produce. But all these guys, you see them and they're going, I got to do something else because my body is breaking down. And I believe it's not a gradual. I believe it goes from one to a hundred for them. Because these injuries are like boom, 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 boom. It's like once you open that injury door, it stays wide open for all kinds of things mm -hmm. to happen. And now you got to not just deal with the recovery, you got to deal with the mental recovery. Exactly. Especially being somebody that was never injured to now I'm dealing with these injuries on a regular basis. And I'm trying to figure out how can I make my body, I used to be able to do one more rep. I used to be able to do you know, one more lap. I used to be able to, you know, go harder. Now I'm looking at my body and it's like, man, I can't do it. And mentally. Yeah. Mentally. Mm -hmm. And you think about it. You watch, watch any football game any weekend. Um, every eight plays, somebody gets hurt. Mm. About that, on the every average, Every eight yeah. plays, somebody gets hurt. Somebody's limping off the field mm -hmm. or somebody's shaking up or somebody's out giving somebody's – every eight plays. That's, that's why, how brutal it is. Yeah. That's why you got so many players on the team because you got to have that many backups. Yeah. yeah. Because you can count on at least, and I'm, I'm not exaggerating, but maybe five to ten uh, season injury, injury, ending injuries. Mm -hmm. Yes. In some very key places. Yes. That you got to go, you know, I got to stock up and stockpile because yeah. if I don't, one injury could just. Wipe out your season. Your whole but, season. But even now, they have to take you into the tent for concussion protocol. Mm -hmm. They have to take you in the tent and close the door and go through a whole lot of things. A battery of tests. Because, because yeah. of concussion 
protocol. Uh -huh. yeah. I mean, that's how brutal it is. Like, think about that. Yeah, it, we gotta have a tent out on the field. Let's 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 add a, a few sprinkles to this as well. Not only does it have this level of brutality, and we still, still enjoy it. We'll be watching every Sunday, yes, too. Yes, and we're just, you know, point of fact. And, and trying to see a game live whenever we oh, can. Oh, exactly, exactly. The other thing is that many of the players, they say, well, hey, part of the reason that, you know, we, we push ourselves so much, part of it is the whole, you know, machismo piece, want to be strong, want to demonstrate ourselves as warriors. A man's man. The other piece is that whatever position I'm playing, I got the next man waiting for me to get out the way. Yes. Right. And if he gets on the field, I might not get back on it. Yes. So right. I'm willing to go through this ragged, brutal challenge. If it ain't, you know, broken or broke off, I'm still going to give it a shot because, hey, man, as soon as you got on the field, you can be replaced that quick, too. It's doggy dog. As That's well. how Tom Brady got on the field. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> we, wouldn't even be know we probably wouldn't even know who Tom Brady was. Yeah. Or is. <laughs> if it was Trent Dilfer, who was in front of Drew Bledsoe. Drew Bledsoe, right. Uh -huh. Hadn't got injured. Like, yeah. are you kidding me? Yeah. And, and, that's, and that's how serious this competition is. It, it is. Everybody's a pro. Mm -hmm. It's not like, it's not like uh, uh, a college guy is trying to take your spot. Mm -hmm. It's another pro. Yes. Another pro who's been, whose job was to watch you and study you and see your flaws. So when you make a mistake, just like the adversary, the devil, uh -huh. studies you. It's the same thing, man. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, and and yeah. And we also got to look at, all, what about when Aaron Rodgers? Him, who, who, who was the quarterback that came when he got injured, that stepped in for a bit? Mark, Mark. Huntley, Huntley. Huntley. Before it was, was Brock Brunel, wasn't it? Oh, it's Brunel, that's Brunel right. Brunel first, then he up. did a great right. game, got traded. Yeah, getting yeah. stock yeah. jobs. Yeah. So what you're saying is my backup can start anywhere. Yeah. yeah. So you got to think about that. So, yeah, I got an injury, but hey, I'm getting back on this field. Back, back to Aaron Rodgers. I mean, back to Brett Favre and the painkillers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers was right behind Brett Favre. For right. Seven and years. Brett Favre saw this man in practice, uh -huh. and he knew he had a, a, a cannon. Uh -huh. And he right. said, you know what? Give me some of these pills. <laughs> right. <laughs> this man get out there. Shoot me up, I might, Scotty. I might not right. get back out there. He right. knew. Yeah. Right. He knew. Exactly. He knew. So you have to you have to start to look at what are we gonna do? Well, what do you do? You make a choice of do I do the drugs? Mm -hmm. Do I deal with the pain? Or do I quit? Do I retire? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't, kudos to everybody who can. Kudos to everybody who can say, you know what? I still want to have grandkids and I want to be able to walk around and have fun with them. If you can do that, do that. Mm -hmm. But for those of you who can't, that's why it's so important to me. If you're in that league, somebody needs to take you and say, this is what you need to do with your money. Mm -hmm. Because just like you ain't got a guaranteed contract, you don't even have a guaranteed tomorrow. Exactly. So you better have something put aside. Because, um, you know, unless you want to go from making, you know, 500000 a year to selling cars. Yeah. 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 And you know. And it, it's, it's, that's, that's a, man, that's no, a, a hey, great, just, no, just Latin. No, no knock on car salesmen. Right, I have, not I at all. I have them in my family. Right. <laughs> right. No, we no appreciate y'all. And, and they make a very good living, but it's yeah. not a professional athlete living. Right. One of the things that was, uh, that was said, two, two things. Ted Thompson, former general manager of the Packers, when he was playing with the Oilers, he was making the team. He did 10, 10 seasons in the NFL. One of the things he said was when he got cut his final year, he was playing special teams during the preseason. They were cutting the team down from about 75 players to the 53-man roster. And he had said he had been receiving good feedback from the coaches, been playing good, hustling good, et cetera, et cetera. He said that when he got cut, it wasn't, if it wasn't for his faith, mm -hmm. he don't know what he would have done because it devastated him. He said in the NFL – you can be cut very, very quick. Your career goes from I'm in the NFL to I'm out. The example he gave was imagine a bucket that has some water in it. If you punch your fist into that bucket of water, as soon as you pull your fist out, there's a little hole that's there. He said as soon as it takes, as, as fast as that hole can be filled back up with water, that's how fast you can be cut from the right. NFL. And right. if you are a guy that's making, let's say, $10 million, $5 million, $20 million, you don't play all year. You play six, seven months out the year. Right. So your checks every two weeks or however you get every month might be in the hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. or in the millions of dollars. Yeah. Once that's done, 
you come back to civilian salaries, right. how do you make that adjustment mentally? From my check is five hundred and twenty-seven thousand dollars to twenty-three hundred. Yeah. Twenty-three hundred is a decent check, but compared to five hundred and twenty-five right. or twenty-seven thousand, it, it 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 doesn't really compare. Has so there how been do you some adjust cutbacks? To that? Correct. Has there been some cutbacks? And most, and most, you know, and if you look at a bunch of whether it be NBA, baseball, football. A lot of these guys don't have money wisdom, and they're broke. I couldn't imagine getting a check of five hundred thousand dollars a month and living check to check, bruh. But they do it. That's yeah. their lifestyle. And for me, I'm going, man. Then retirement's gonna be terrible for you, uh, yeah. because now you're dropping down to maybe ten, fifteen thousand a month. Mm -hmm. You know, so there has to be some thought process of future not just here present. and now. And, and, and let me just say this about the financial piece of it. Um, the key thing to it is to use money properly. Right. Mm -hmm. it, it, you, don't, you don't even have to use it wisely if you use it properly. And what I mean by that, buy things that are going to be an asset because you can liquidate them. Exactly. Like you can sell a house, you can sell a car, but if you're drinking and doing drugs and womanizing right. and partying and all that, Gone. there's there's no return on your investment. Right. And sometimes mm -hmm. people get caught up in that part of it. You know, mm -hmm. jewelry, you know, I mean, why do you need the biggest piece? I mean, all of these things are things that are a lot of the uh, people who come in young culturally, right. that's what they come from. That becomes an identity for them. Mm -hmm. So uh, buying... And it has no resale value. Yeah, but buying, using money properly, not mm -hmm. just wisely, properly, gives you a, a longer amount of time to stay liquid. Sustainability. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm going to close with this comment. I, I read this article that says, you know, and all this is really about ego. It's really what it's about. But Male I, ego. Yeah. But he said, ego lives in two places. It lives in your future and in your past, but it does not live in your present. Mm. Who said I, that? I don't, that's good. If you don't recall, that's yeah, cool. It'll come yeah, back yeah. to you. But that made a whole lot of sense because you talk about your ego's built up on, yeah, dude, I used to kill him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or it's, Man, what I'm getting ready to do is going to be killer. Right. But your right now don't have no ego. Right. Mm -hmm. Because your present, is, your present kills your ego. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with that being said, man, great show, fellas. Indeed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Great show. Yeah. Hey, listen, again, I want to invite you to hang out with me October 11th and 12th at the Harley-Davidson Museum at the Keeping It 100 conference. I got my boy E.T. coming with me to hang out, as well as Jason Nelson. It is going to be off the chain. Fellas, you can come. Ladies, you can even come because we're having a special master class where you can come be a part. You can sign up at worldoutreachbtc.org. Again, www.worldoutreachbtc.org. And until next week, have an amazing week. We'll see you. Peace.